So the ball is teed up at the 35-yard line. Calabrese and Secray back deep for Case to receive it. They will stare into the sun for the third quarter. This will be Calabrese. Bobbles the ball at the three. Finds a seam at the 10. Looking for some more running room and is brought down at the 17-yard line. Case will start first and 10 inside their own 20. This might be the worst starting field position Case has had all game, Ed. Yeah, they did have the 20-yarder following the punt that went in the end zone, and that ended up resulting on a third down pass play that was tipped and intercepted by Carnegie Mellon. Case will show a three wide receiver set. George Duraney is the tight end on the right side of the formation. Eric Olson goes under center. Now Case gets a quick confirmation of the play from the sideline and they're set to go. This is Secre off the left side, fights ahead to the 21 yard line, spins out of a tackle. Jonathan Tanner. Tanner with the initial contact in the backfield, but Secre did a nice job spinning away. I like that the Spartans have gone to Secre on the first play of this drive. You know, trying to get the, the running back who had some uh, better runs toward the end of the second quarter, trying to get him involved early. Mellon has gone to a three-man defensive front. They've moved a linebacker on the edge. Snap throw in the flat, complete the lap Sevic. Little inside step move, and lap Sevic has crossed the 35, close to a first down marker. Drag down there. Nicolaitis, Phil Nicolaitis on the tackle, the senior outside linebacker. Vinny Bell comes into the ball game. He'll check in at wide receiver. Lapsevic is still in the game. He'll be on a slot on the inside left. Brian Rice outside left formation. Third and one for Case from the 30, or protected from the 25 yard line. Olsen under center, gives their play fake to Secre. Olsen steps up, fires back over the middle. Lapsevic is collided with at the 33, but hangs onto the football. Good enough for a first down. A.K. Breffo there to really drop the hammer. Breffo from Lawrenceville, Georgia. I'll tell you what, when you, when you get a, uh, a safety who's able to come, you know, attack the receiver right as he's catching the ball, but time to hit up as well as he did. More often than not, that's going to be a, a defensive win. But you got to give a lot of credit there offensively that time as Lapsevic was able to hang on to the football and, and get the first down. Secre on the draw play gets a yard and ends up at the bottom of the pile. As he stepped on a couple of times, he's still talking to the officials about it. And I, I know you've seen this team a little more than I have throughout the course of this season. What senior do you think needs to make the biggest impact here in the second half? I think for Case Western, the, it just comes down to execution of the play calling. They've they've slimmed down the playbook, but it's, it's going to take the offensive line, I would think especially the right side of that offensive line that's seniors, to really start opening up some holes. Case needs to control the clock and really put that Carnegie Mellon defense on the field more than they were in the first half. Secret with a duck under move, and he'll pick up seven yards after avoiding the initial contact. Farquharson was the initial man there for Carnegie Mellon. I guess when you're 5'10", 172 pounds, you can probably duck underneath a tackle or two. Really nice move there. And uh, Liam there McGrath is down yeah. on the near sideline here for Carnegie Mellon. McGrath now just rolling over, was face down. Now he's rolled over on his back, and while they attend to McGrath, we'll take a timeout. Case down 24-16, 12-28 to play in the third quarter, but the Spartans are moving the football to open the third quarter. You're listening to Case Western Reserve University football on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. 
Cleveland Marriott Downtown at Key Center offers the versatility and reliability to meet your unique travel and meeting needs. From smart spaces to practical amenities to world-class service, our flagship hotel will deliver the quality experience you expect, backed by the Marriott name you trust. At Cleveland Marriott, we have one goal, to serve you better. Book your special Case Western Reserve rate by visiting us at clevelandmarriottdowntown.com and entering promotional code C0N. Liam McGrath walking off the field under his own power, although being helped and guided by a couple of trainers from Carnegie Mellon. Case staring at third and one following the run by Manny Secre. Four wide receivers are now in the ball game for Case. Vinnie Bell split wide to the right as slowly Liam McGrath is making his way to the sideline. Brian Rice is the lone wide receiver on the left side of the formation. Secre will be the lone setback. He'll stand six behind Olsen, who will go under center. Case gets a quick look from the sideline. Carnegie Mellon with just six in the box. Give us the Secre, bounces outside, has the first down at the 45. Stiff arm and fighting for more, and is forced back at the 45-yard line. Shea Seeley with the tackle on Manny Secre. But not after Secre picks up the needed yardage for the first down, and Case is converted on back-to-back -back third downs on the drive. Have it first and 10 at the 45-yard line. 24-16, just under 12 minutes to play in the third quarter. Case moving into the setting sun, setting November sun here at Case Field in University Circle. Led Doherty alongside Brendan Gulick this afternoon. Ricky Hanslick gets the carry. Right side into Tartan territory. Picks up 10, beats off a defender at the 45 and comes down at the 43-yard line. Well, it was like a stiff elbow, Brendan, more than a <laughs> stiff arm. He just kind of threw his elbow out. And yeah, got away he was, from the he was helped, uh, helped by the spin move, too, that started to take some momentum away from him. But Hans looks like a bowling ball. He's a short, stocky back. And uh, when you try to wrap somebody like that up too high, he'll, he'll bounce right off you. So another first down for Case as they have moved the chains. 44-yard line of Carnegie Mellon. Olsen under center. Again, this one goes to Hanslick. Right side and then ridden down after a couple. Eric Rolfus makes the tackle for Carnegie Mellon. Hanslick played his ball at Mentor High School as well. Was a freshman teammate of Bill Deitman. Now you're going to see Vinnie Bell split out wide here with Sam Thompson. Two guys who've made a lot of plays for both teams here today. We'll see if we, which one of them maybe wins the one-on-one -on -one battle here. Zach Scott is the lone wide receiver. This is Lepsevic on the inside wide receiver screen, and he's got some room to run. He cuts to the outside and is brought down at the 20-yard line. And now we have some officials tangled up, or some players tangled up, and Greg Debelak arguing with the officials. He thought that Lepsevic was brought down by the shoulder pads. An official said no. Now we're staring right into that sun as well as the teams move to the south end zone here at Case Field. Four wide receiver set, Olsen under center. Hanslick off the weak side, stiff arms at the 15. And it's pushed out of bounds officially at the 16-yard line. Ricky Hanslick with pickup of four yards on first down. There it goes again, Ed, and you mentioned that you know, he clearly stepped out of bounds. He wasn't tackled, but the clock continues to tick away here now once the referee uh, <laughs> signaled that it did so. I, I, I mean, we, we must not understand the rule correctly. I, I thought you run out of bounds and the clock stopped. <laughs> Olsen now to the shotgun. Hanslick will stand to his right. Lepsevic is in the slot on the right side. This one is a little out pattern to Lepsevic. Here comes a flag. Case is going to get called for an interference call as Lapsevic is hurtled out of bounds inside the five yard line. Case is gonna get called for a pick. And that's gonna cost him 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Well, Sam Thompson did the right thing there. 
He went down and he tried to knock uh, knock Webb Sebek out of bounds and he, he hit him low. And sometimes when you see a, a you know, I, I guess it's probably defenseless even though he was certainly in motion. But when, when you go to hurdle like that and you get hit down low, it's kind of scary when you're coming down. Your heels are over your head. You're trying not to land on your head. Yeah, Case is going to get called for the pick as they ran that inside cross move. And I think the rule on that, Ed, is that you can do that within five yards, but if you do it deeper than five yards, that's when it's illegal. Yeah, and you can't, you can't physically make a, a block or a move on the defensive back and impede his option to make the cover. It's a play that almost every team runs with a three-wide receiver set. They take the two outside receivers and they rub them to the inside on short posts and the inside slot receiver runs a quick out and they hope to get that that pick and roll effect from basketball. So a 15 yard penalty for Case, it backs him all the way to the 32 yard line. Second and 22 officially. Olsen three step drop, looks, fires, fade pattern for Vinnie Bell in the corner of the end zone. Bell has it and it's a touchdown for Case Western. Case responds to the interference call with a 32-yard touchdown pass from Eric Olson to Vinny Bell. Check that. They're going to give it to Sean. Or no, that is Vinny Bell with the catch. I thought for a minute it was left Sevic, but it is Vinny Bell with the catch. That's just an impressive play by Vinny Bell to go up. Olson put it up there and said, go get it, big boy. Cullen Brown going to come out and kick the extra point. Juan Coon Park wanted to run out in the field and kick the extra point. And <laughs> Greg Double grabbed him and told him, no, go back to the sideline. So Brown will get it down, hoping to make Case within a point. And he misses his second of the afternoon. Maybe he shouldn't have grabbed Park after all. <laughs> That's only the fourth catch of the day for Vinnie Bell for 134 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> Making the most of his opportunities is Vinnie Bell. His case is now down by two, 24-22. Following the 32-yard touchdown pass from Eric Olson to Vinnie Bell. And you could make a career highlight film out of the four catches that Vinnie Bell has had this afternoon. 9-13 to play in the third quarter. Case moves right down the field on their opening drive. Gets a touchdown to make this game a two-point game. Academic Bowl. Officially, it's been the Academic Bowl since 1986. These two teams have met every year since 1970. That's when Case Institute of Technology and Western Reserve University federated. 26 wins for Carnegie Mellon, 15 for Case Western. Three touchdowns on the day for Case Western. Those drives, 11 plays, 69 yards. Uh, they have gone 10 plays, or 11 plays, 57 yards on their field goal. Scored a touchdown on that um, real quick six play, 75 yard drive, you know, last half. And then the 11 play, 83 yard drive now. I mean, they're moving the ball up and down the field. Uh, and when, when they do, they're scoring. They're taking advantage of that. When the time of possession is getting even wider as we head deeper into the third quarter, Case is now headed for 24 and a half minutes. Carnegie Mellon, 11 minutes and 14 seconds. And they still have the lead. And Carnegie Mellon may be a more telling stat than the time of possession. Case is 6 of 11 on third down conversions. Carnegie Mellon is yet to convert on third down this afternoon. 0 for 6 for the Tartans. First and 10 for Carnegie Mellon from the 16-yard line. Kalkstein will give it to the lead tailback off the left side. And I believe that Mike, that was Mike Trentalangi. I'm having a hard time staring right into that sun and seeing any numbers <laughs> at all. I'm lucky I can identify there's even players on the field the way the sun's coming in. Right into our window, staring dead into the sun. 
Kalkstein with the play fake, rolling to his right, design quarterback sweep. He cuts back to the middle and then gets drilled. Jordan Banky drops his shoulder, weighs self at the bottom of the pile for Case Western, but it's good enough for a first down on the design quarterback sweep. I've been kind of impressed with the way Brian Connolly's played today at center. Very sound all the way around. Hustles up to the ball every time. He's done a nice job of keeping the middle of the offensive line. A good chop block there. Toss sweep to Trent Alonji. Case does a nice job stringing it out. Give Trent Alonji a yard or so on first down. Connolly, a St. Ignatius High School graduate. Case has a player down. We'll take a look at that Case player. St. Ignatius with a big game tonight. I'll be over calling that ball game later tonight. They play in the regional semifinals tonight. There's, uh, there's a couple good football games in Division I high school football, Region 1. St. Ed's playing mentor this evening as well. You got to think in that game, Ed, I know you're awfully familiar with high school football. You got to think St. Ed's is probably favored in that game just with the fact that their defense has played so well. Yeah, nationally ranked now. Uh, got a couple of wins over the last couple of weeks that have propelled them into that situation. One has them ranked in the top 10 nationally, so the Eagles are 11-0 on the season. That's Brandon Bryant for Case Western that's uh, coming off the field. And they face an offense in the Mentor Cardinals. That's Bill Deitman's alma mater. And the Mentor Cardinals... High-flying offense, averaging over 45 points per game this season. Of course, the other big story right now in Division I high school football, Massillon, Washington, the Tigers are having a phenomenal season. They have won a number of uh, state championships at the high school football level, but they've never won it on the field since they started instituting the, the state championship game. And if they don't win it this year, they never will because with the way the OHSAA schools are uh, reorganizing, Ed, they're going to bump to Division II. Yeah, Maslin, Washington, national power for years, but since 1972 has not been able to capture a crown. Inside shovel pass goes to Blanks on the end around. Blanks coming near side and really strung out well by the Case defense. Yes, you get to see tonight, if you're a high school fan, probably the number one rivalry in the country, Maslin and McKinley. That game taking place at Kent State University. Those two teams meet traditionally in week 10 of the regular season, and they have matched up a few times in the playoffs. Maslin beat them this year, correct? Maslin did beat them in week 10 and earned the number one seed in their region. And now these two teams are matched up two weeks later. Rivals.com says it's the best high school football rivalry in the country. It is also the oldest west of the Allegheny Mountains. Over the middle and incomplete, Kalkstein looking for his... Wingback Kyle Irish incomplete, and Carnegie Mellon has failed to convert on another third down, and the Tartans will need to punt away. And Calabrese is going to go back deep for Case. Get some final instructions from Greg Debelak. Glad we were able to talk a little high school football. Hopefully I won't have to look into the sun for the next couple of plays. Punt is almost blocked, maybe partially blocked. Yes, partially blocked. Case did get a piece of it. Ball will come to rest at the Spartan 36-yard line, and the Spartans will take over from there. Getting a piece of the ball for Case. Jacob LaFleur, junior safety from St. Charles in the Columbus area. St. Charles High School. LaFleur is from Hilliard, Ohio, and... <laughs> Hilliard Davidson High School and Hilliard Darby High School playing tonight in a Region 3 in the Columbus area. So another neighborhood brawl between two high schools down in Columbus. First and 10 for Case from the 36-yard line following the partially blocked kick. This is Secre straight ahead, nothing there. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage and then slammed down Dustin Schneider. The defensive tackle for... Carnegie Mellon stops him cold, and Secre is slow to get up as he was body slammed back into the pile. 
Seacray will walk gingerly to the sideline, and Ricky Hanslick will take his place in the lineup. Getting a little chippy at the 6.30 mark of the third quarter here. Well, not surprising between two teams who are playing in their final game of the season. You know, you get in this rivalry game, the game is hotly contested right now. K should be tied right now. The fact of the matter is they've missed two extra points. This has been a pretty evenly matched game. Yeah, both teams looking to finish over, or Case looking to finish over 500. Carnegie Mellon looking with a win, has a chance at an outside championship at the UAA. So does Case with a win. Play fake to Hanslick, thrown to the outside. It's Rice, catches it off his shoe tips. Crosses the 40 following the wide receiver screen and gets out to the 43-yard line. Does Brian Rice, the senior. Rice from Michigan, playing in his final game at Case Western. Third and short for Case Western. Olsen under center. Vinny Bell now the outside receiver in three wide receivers set to the right. Tony Leibarger is the inside slot. Give us to Hanslick, weak side. Hanslick crosses the 45 and has a first down as Case continues to pound away at that tartan defense. Scuffle downfield, Andy Burkbile has a few words for A.J. Breffo. Teammates separate them, and again, it's still getting a little chippy. Yeah, Shea Seeley, the sophomore safety, running in there quickly to make sure that nothing further happened between the two. The last thing Carnegie Mellon wants to do right now is commit a personal foul and give the, the Spartans offense another 15 yards. Third quarter here shaping up much like the first quarter did where Case had two long possessions for scores and led 10-0. Secre behind his right guard. Picks up three to midfield running behind Jake Abbott. Getting a down block from the center, Andy Burkbile. Drew Volbers comes to the sideline, and Brian Rice back in at wide receiver. He'll be the lone wide receiver on the left. Case has three wide receivers split to the right. Tony Leibarger is the wide receiver on the inside slot. Secre back at the tailback stand, seven behind Olsen. Weak side slant again. Looking for running room, spinning away from a tackle as Seacray still fighting and finally goes down at the 50 yard or the 45 yard line. You know, this has been a pretty violent game back and forth, guys, you know, hitting hard. But you, you really, you kind of take a step back and you understand that um, a lot of these kids really get it. Both teams helping each other up after each play. Uh, there really hasn't been any dirty hits all game. And they played a little after the whistle, but really nothing on sportsmen like on either side. That's always good to see. Third and four. Again, Case back to the weak side. I think they found something on that side, but they can't capitalize. As Shea Seeley comes up, seals the corner. Hansel can't get the first down. And Farquhar Hansen, or Farquharson, Ross Farquharson makes the tackle for Carnegie Mellon. Fourth down and four from the 44-yard line. Case lines up like they're going to go for it. Carnegie Mellon has nobody deep for the shank punt should Olsen decide to pooch it. And now he backs up into punt formation. Olsen will take it. Nice little chip punt. Lands at the 20. Rolls inside the 20 towards the 16. And down there by Vinnie Bell. Carnegie Mellon will start first and 10 from their own 16-yard line. 3.14 to play in the third quarter. And Carnegie Mellon leading by a deuce, 24-22. Difference in the ball game. Two missed extra points by Case Western, one by Juan Coon Park and one by Cullen Brown. Right back into the sun, are we? First and 10 for Carnegie Mellon. It's probably the last time we're going to complain about warm sunshine <laughs> all year, right. Ed. We might as well take advantage of it, right? Should be nice the next couple of days. Carnegie Mellon with a straight-ahead dive play off the left side of the formation. Nothing there. Case does a nice job of bottling it up. Wade Self, Kevin Nossum, the two linebackers there for Case. And I asked you a little bit ago what senior you thought needed to step up most in the second half. There are definitely some younger, talented guys on this Case roster. Who do you think is going to make the biggest impact for the Spartans next year? I, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, but I think it, 
in the backfield is where you're going to see it. Manny Secret gets another year under his belt. Ricky Hanslick will still be there as Kalkstein completes a seam route to his running back Patrick Blanks. Blanks out to the 41-yard line. First and 10, Carnegie Mellon. I, I think the running back duo there, plus Kenny Reardon, who was hurt early in the season, will be back, and Reardon will be a a senior next year, so you'll have three backs that have really seen a lot of action, and that's where your impact's going to come because Case then, if Secret gets a little worn down or Reardon gets a little worn down, then all of a sudden you've just got another fresh back to run in, and that's what Greg Debelak has done over the years. He's always had that backfield by committee, and uh, next year he will have three solid running backs that all have experience, all have playing time, and uh, should be a pretty good Offensive backfield for Case Western. False start called against Carnegie Mellon. It'll back them up five to the 36-yard line, first and 15 for the Tartans. Throw to the flat, incomplete. Pass was intended for Herrera, down low below the waist, but Herrera not able to come up with the catch again. That's the third time this afternoon that Herrera's had a ball touch his hands and hasn't been able to come up with it. Second and 15 for Carnegie Mellon. It's really hard to feel like Carnegie Mellon has the lead in this game. Case has had the ball twice as long as they have, if not longer, and you know they, they've had the bigger, more exciting plays. Carnegie Mellon's strikes have been so quick and, and pretty infrequent it just doesn't feel like Carnegie Mellon is trying to retain possession here to run off some clock. Case showing blitz. Here comes Noss himself off the corner, and down goes Kalkstein in the backfield. Kalkstein will get dumped for a loss at the 25-yard line. Colin Dessens with the sack. Glad to see him back earlier in the season. Dessens was actually taken off the field in an ambulance. Uh, precautionary. Ended up with just a, a neck sprain. Uh... Looked very bad to start with. Then a couple of minutes later, you noticed that he had some movement in his hands, but they took total precaution, put him on the board, and took him across the street to University Hospital. But Dessens has been back. Missed a week of action for his senior year, but other than that, has played well at the defensive tackle position. Third and a zip code for Carnegie Mellon. This is Blanks on the jet sweep. Coming around the corner, nothing there. Dragged down, Michael Harris is there. Adam Watson there, Dessens again at the bottom of the pile, and Blanks is slow to get up. Carnegie Mellon fails again on third down in case Western will get the ball back. This time with maybe a little better field position. 58 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Blanks is still down. He's taking his helmet off, but I think he got the wind knocked out of him by having four case players fall on him with the ball underneath him. Well, with now under a minute to go in the third quarter, Case is going to have the football back, and you got to like that they'll have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter, and they'll be going away from the sun. You know, sometimes you might think that those things might not mean as much. When you're in your home field, you're in a highly contested rivalry game, you want every little bit of edge you can get. Every little bit. And with that as well, you're also moving in towards the scoreboard, so you get a better look at how much time is remaining should you need that. Blanks will hustle off the field. Fourth down and 25. Ball officially marked at the Carnegie Mellon 26-yard line. Calabrese drops deep to return the kick. Calabrese will stand at his own 30-yard line waiting on the punt. Case got a piece of the last one. Lafleur getting in there. Case has eight on the line, looking to bring the pressure again. Here come the Spartans off the edge. Kick is away. Low line drive kick. Calabrese will feel it as his 29. Makes a move, gets away from the first defender. To the 40, cuts back to the outside, or inside, and is dragged down at the 42-yard line. That was a great punt, and, and you know on the return, Calabrese was able to, to shake Seeley just a little bit, but give Seeley some credit, too. He didn't give up on the, the play. He comes back and makes the tackle. 13-yard return by Dan Calabrese in case is in business at their own 42-yard line with 36 seconds to play in the third quarter. 
And some more scoring updates. Heidelberg on top of Baldwin Wallace, 35-34 with four seconds to go. That would clinch, uh, depending on who has the ball. I, I would think it's just about over, but if Heidelberg wins, that would clinch a playoff spot for them. Marietta, the opening opponent on the 2012 calendar for Case, is going to finish winless. They're down 38-14 to Muskingum with less than a minute to go. Outside screen pass to Vinnie Bell. Bell has a convoy in front of him. Bell now has Green in front of him, and Bell all the way to the Mellon 25-yard line. Vinnie Bell on the little screen pass. It's all Bell all down the sideline. Five catches, what'd you say? He's making the most of them. <laughs> Another huge gain there for this case offense as they look to take the lead. And uh, they won't have to run a play, I don't think, here at the end of the quarter. They'll have to get one off. That's just about a half a second difference between the play clock and the game clock. This will be Olsen again. Vinnie Bell catching the bubble screen. Makes a couple more. Cartons miss. Finds a seam. Steps ahead. Has nine more. Does Vinnie Bell... And with that, we've come to the end of the third quarter here at Case Field. Carnegie Mellon 24, Case Western 22. Stick around. We should have a good fourth quarter. You're listening to Case Western Reserve University football on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its ninth consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or a highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience that is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. This year, Qdoba will cater like 10,000 parties. Where? When? I'm there. Well, these parties are hypothetical. I was just talking about Qdoba catering. Hot taco bars with fire-grilled chicken and marinated steak, flour tortillas, and taco shells. You'll also get their hand-smashed guacamole, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and salsa. They'll deliver to your home or office, and they'll even set it up. Can I bring a guest? Oh, boy. Visit Qdoba.com today for more information about Qdoba catering. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. Starting the fourth quarter here from Case Field, the Spartans are set up second and short from the Carnegie Mellon 14-yard line. Ed Doherty alongside Brendan Gulick this afternoon. Dave Wilson is on assignment with the Kent State Lady Flashes basketball team as they open their season in Massachusetts. Give us to Secray. Secray crawls ahead for a first down to the 11-yard line. I think that's all Case was looking for. Get the first down, move the chains. And now with the ball at the 11-yard line, they can get a first down without actually getting a touchdown. Just underway, fourth quarter. Case now moving from left to right across your video screen and computer. Case has gone to a two tight end set on the left side of the formation. Give us the Secret looking for a seam. Secret crawls inside the 10. And he'll dive ahead to the 9-yard line. A pickup of a couple from Manny Secret. Vinny Bell now with six catches on the afternoon. Brendan, 178 yards in the books. Yeah, he's starting to flirt a little bit with that school record, 222 yards. 222 yards. That was accomplished back in 1997. Dave Worley had... 222 yards receiving against Chicago. Zach Homick a couple of years ago flirted with that. He had 220 yards receiving in a ball game. Brendan Beecher now in at quarterback. Beecher picks his way to the goal line and a touchdown. Boy, was it slow developing, but Beecher made the most of it and is in the end zone on a nine-yard touchdown run, and the Spartans have retaken the lead, 28-24. Great patience by the sophomore signal caller who started off like he was going to go forward at a quicker pace, then kind of stuttered and stopped, let the blocks develop, and just slowly pushed his way through. He let the Hogs up front get their job done, and he stretched over the goal line for the touchdown. 
This is a big extra point now for Case because if they convert this, it goes to a five-point lead. That would certainly help their well, cause Case, here. Case is going for two because the difference between five and six is is a much better situation, especially the way that makes sense. The, okay. the way their team blocks field goals and extra points. So a six-point lead would serve them well. Case lined up for a two-point conversion with a two tight end set. They're heavy to the left. This is Beecher, little toss pass, and it's good. It was intended for Manny Secret. He makes the catch on the jump pass from Beecher to Secret, and it really almost looked like a point guard with a little dribble drive and dumped it down low to the big man. Instead, he went to the little man at the back of the end zone, and Secret catches it in the low post for the two-point conversion. And the Spartans are on top, 30 to 24. As you might expect, a little fist pumping next door where the coaches are sitting there and saying, hey, we've been waiting to call a play like that all game. Found the perfect opportunity. You got to love that when you're an offensive coordinator and you're able to set that up so perfectly and it works, nothing is better than that. Case had three wide receivers to the right. They went off balance to the left. Secret went through the line on a play fake. The linebackers came up to Beecher and he just dumped it down low. And nobody around Manny Secre as he stood inside the goalie box and made the reception. Case up 30 to 24 with 13.43 to play in the football game. Setting sun here at Case Field. Spartans looking to finish the year strong, six and four. That's Juan Coon Park with the kickoff. This one will go over all of the defenders' heads into the end zone and out of the end zone. And Carnegie Mellon will start first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. Case has run 64 plays for 411 yards and used a solid 30 minutes in time of possession. Carnegie Mellon 42 plays, 206 yards, 16 minutes, 20 seconds. And Almost go, two to one, and both you, sides. And you go back to that third down conversion line just underneath the time of possession case. 7 of 13 on third down conversions, and Carnegie Mellon still not having a third down conversion in the ball game. 0 for 8 on the afternoon. Even more important for Case, they have scored on all five red zone chances. High snap to Kalkstein. He fires out to the far side. It's complete out there to Swanson. The wide receiver screen is good for a couple of yards. Swanson stopped inbounds after a two-yard gain. Second and eight for Carnegie Mellon, now down six. See, this is where it helps Carnegie Mellon to have been a more of a passing team this year. If you're down six points with, you know, there, there's still enough time on the clock, Ed. There's no doubt about that. But if you may have a tough day running the football and, you know, you only have 67 pass attempts all year, if that's the case, you know, this year it's a much different team. They've thrown 167 pass attempts. But you've talked about how in the past they, they used to never throw the football. That makes this field look a lot longer than it is. Yeah, they have been very limited. They, they lived on the fact that they were ahead in ball games and would wear teams down. Today, Case with an advantage, 2-1 to one in time of possession. Kalkstein on the quarterback sweep. Picks up a couple to the 30-yard line. Ryan Ferguson leads the blue wall charge. Wade Self there for Case Western. Colin Dessens at the bottom of the pile for Case Western. Kalkstein quickly got to the corner, and at the numbers, all of a sudden, it was nothing but blue shirts around Rob Kalkstein. Third and call it a long three for Carnegie Mellon. Play clock is now down to 12. And they're going to have to wait and call a timeout. And they do. Carnegie Mellon takes a timeout. We'll take one, two, 12 21 to play in the football game. Case leading Carnegie Mellon 30 to 24. You're listening to Case Western Reserve University football on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering world cuisine created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook.
I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. On third and three, Rob Kalkstein, under pressure, rolls to his right and is very close to a first down. If he is, it's the first time this afternoon that Carnegie Mellon will have picked up a first down on third down, and they will, as officially they're going to give him the 35-yard line, and by the extra stripe on the football, he gets a first down. How much do you think that uh, call was influenced by the fact that it was on top of the Carnegie Mellon sideline. <laughs> uh, you could watch that play on film 10 times and probably mark it in 10 different spots. That's such a hard call to make and then to decide that it just barely touches the goal line. Double inside reverse, now to the flea flicker. Kalkstein looking deep downfield. He's got a receiver and it is incomplete. No flag on no, the play. No, it's intercepted, Ed. Is it intercepted? It is. I thought it hit the ground. Kerry Dieter comes up with the ball. I thought Dieter knocked it away and rolled over the top of it. They're going to say Dieter came up with the ball and Case takes over. It was a double handoff, then back to Kalkstein on the flea flicker. Kalkstein looking deep downfield for Kitna, underthrew it just a little bit. And Kerry Dieter was there for the interception. Well, you got to admire the fact that Carnegie Mellon wanted to take a shot. There's still a lot of time left, and you got to think that their defense is going to have to make a stop. You know, they're, they're a good enough team. They've, they've been in some tight games throughout the course of the year. You know, the only big game that they lost was against Wabash, and they got uh, they got pushed around a little in that game. But, uh, you know, they lost close games to Ohio Wesleyan and, and to Wash U. you got to think that their defense is going to try to step up and make a play here. Still plenty of time, just under 12 minutes to go. Olsen under center will give to Secret. Secret picks his way for a yard to the 25-yard line. And just as Carnegie Mellon had converted on their first third down of the day, the next play is an interception deep downfield. It's almost the equivalent of not making that first down and punting the ball. Case quickly to the line, second and eight from the 25. Olsen gets confirmation from the sideline, goes back under center. Secre is the tailback. This will be Vinny Bell on the wide receiver screen. Bell catches it and picks up very little, only a couple, to the 27-yard line. Vinny Bell now to 180 yards receiving on the afternoon. Third down for Case, third and six from the 27. They need to get to the 33-yard line for a first down. Olsen will direct traffic. He moves Vinnie Bell to the inside slot on the left side. Dan Cronin is the wide receiver on the near side. Olsen is hit. Ball is loose. Ball is on the turf. And Carnegie Mellon has the football at the 17-yard line. Blitz coming. Carnegie Mellon just leveled. Eric Olson ball comes out, and the Tartans will take over first and 10 from the 17-yard line. Wow, another costly turnover. Case has been bitten by that bug all season long, and once again, Carnegie Mellon, they find that one crazy play. They come up with, uh, <laughs> with the turnover. They scored on a bad punt. An interception at the five-yard line. And now they recover a fumble at the 17. Kalkstein under center, rolling to his right, looking under pressure. Now he's being chased by Watson, and Watson drags him down near the line of scrimmage. Adam Watson shows the speed as he runs Rob Kalkstein down from behind. Well, now it's time for Case to play some inspired football. Got a six-point lead here in the... Fourth quarter clock is 
Still uh, still plenty of time on it with under 10 minutes to go, but you can come up with a big red zone stop. That'll go a long way into helping you win this game. I wonder what Carnegie Mellon will do if faced with a fourth down inside the 20. DeLello straight ahead. He'll be stood up near the 15-yard line. Only a couple for Jared DeLello, the senior running back. Third down and six for Carnegie Mellon. Back to that thought, with a six-point lead, a field goal would cut it in half with just over nine minutes to play. Would Rick Lacker chance it that his team would get another break or an opportunity? Or would he go for it on fourth down and roll the dice and see if he can pick up a first down and potentially a touchdown to tie the game? Kalkstein under center. Snap throw. Ball is... Incomplete, intended for Patrick Blanks off the wing, and I believe Case got a piece of it. Adam Watson, I think, got a hand up, having a hard time looking into the sun, determining what's going on exactly. And Carnegie Mellon will bring on the field goal unit on fourth and six from the 15-yard line. Ball will be spotted officially at the 21. It's a 31-yard field goal attempt for Connor Young. I think this is the right call, Ed. You've got to take some points when you're down here. Case has already blocked a field goal today and got a partial block on a punt. Ten blocks on the season for Case Western. Snap is down, kick is on his way, kick is blocked again. The Spartans have blocked it again. LaFleur with his second of the ball game. One on the punt, one on the field goal unit. Ed, sometimes when you look at a stat sheet and see that a team has blocked 11 kicks on the season, you, well, well let, me, let me rewind that. Sometimes when you look at a stat sheet for an individual game, maybe you think that they're just out leveraging. Maybe you think that they're just up against a bad special teams unit. When you look at a stat sheet and see 11 block kicks in a game, your jaw drops. That's unbelievable. And they've done now three kicks apiece in the last three weeks. <laughs> they have found something that is beginning to work, and uh, the numbers are adding up. They got one early in the season against Marietta. In the last two weeks have come out strong in UAA play. This is Olsen. Give us to Secret. Secret submarines his way to the 25-yard line. You know, that's another storyline too, Ed, that this is the last game these two teams are going to play really for what's only the UAA as they'll both join the pack for football next year. Yeah, the UAA for football will dissolve officially uh, in this year. And both Carnegie Mellon and Case Western will join the pack in 2014. So both schools will play as an independent schedule next year. And that case schedule for next year has them going from Seattle to Maryland to fill out the schedule. Olsen to Secray. Secray again trying to get underneath the defenders, this time for a yard to the 26-yard line. They'll play the University of Puget Sound out near Seattle. And then they have to go to Frostburg State as part of the home and home series. And Frostburg State is in the Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. So quite a run. Then in 2014, Case Western and Carnegie Mellon will join the pack. Case will continue to play the other two teams in the UAA, Chicago and Wash U, who joined the Southern Conference for football only. Basketball and all other sports. Case Western and Carnegie Mellon will be part of the University Athletic Association. Under pressure is Olsen fired out near the numbers, incomplete, intended for Secre. Good defense there by Carnegie Mellon. Eric Rolfus on coverage. And Case will have to kick it away as they can't convert on third down. 7.25 to play in the football game. Well, now at this point, you've got to think that no matter what time's on the clock, Carnegie Mellon probably has to be in four-down territory all over the field. Well, and considering that they were unable to convert on third down basically the whole game, and then the field goal unit has not been the greatest. This is Thompson on the return. Thompson will catch it at the 45, and Case will make sure that he stays in Carnegie Mellon territory at the 49-yard line. Ryan Ferguson at the bottom of the pile for Case Western. First and 10, Carnegie Mellon from their own 
nine yard line, 7-16 to play in the game. Case with a 30 to 24 lead. Case has missed two extra points today. They've converted on a two point conversion and Carnegie Mellon has had two field goal attempts blocked. Kalkstein with a throw to Blanks. Blanks in trouble, caught in the backfield and down he goes. Jordan Banky there for Case Western, Ryan Ferguson also there. Wow, I just got confirmation that, you know, how Heidelberg beat Baldwin Wallace today, 35-34. Heidelberg blocked a BW game-winning field goal attempt and blocked BW's only extra point in the second half. You want to talk about a team of destiny. Heidelberg finishes the season having only lost to Mount Union. And the OAC and most likely will earn themselves an at-large bid to the were, Division III tournament, which they starts were second next week. In the, they were second in the region. Fumble as the toss is to DeLello. DeLello is caught in the backfield, and now he's going to go down as he retrieves the football. Late whistle coming from the officials, but his forward progress will only get him to the 42-yard line. Kalkstein with a high toss sweep to DeLello. DeLello fielded it off his shoulder pads. It went behind him. He had to circle back to pick it up, and all of a sudden he was in trouble. Case busted through the line. DeLello nowhere to go and was swarmed under at the 42-yard line. It all seemed to happen simultaneously. You almost wonder if he took his eye off the ball and saw a rush of blue coming at him. And just for that split second, maybe that's what caused the fumble. Third and long, officially. It'll be third and 17 from the 42-yard line of Carnegie Mellon. Under six minutes to play and Case clinging to a six-minute or six-point lead. Three wide receiver set. Kalkstein looking, looking, looking under pressure. Down he goes. He fumbled the football, and Carnegie Mellon gets back on top of it. Adam Watson, Michael Sarosky there for Case Western. And now Carnegie Mellon moved backwards on that possession and has to kick it away. Bryce Pardo, the tight end, came back to recover it for Carnegie Mellon, or it could have spelled the end. Five minutes and counting. Punt is away. Calabrese fair catch called for at the 35-yard line. And no reason for him to try to return it there. Maintain possession, and now Case has to play run out the clock. Only two timeouts left for Carnegie Mellon. Still five minutes to go. They've got a six-point lead. Move the chains a couple of times, get the clock moving, and see if, uh, see if you can finish off the season with a win. It'll take three first downs for Case to run out the clock. Carnegie Mellon again with only two timeouts. They had to use one as they were running down on the play clock in the fourth quarter. Eric Olson is now the quarterback. Case comes out in an I formation. Hockman, fullback. Secret, a tailback. Durangy, the tight end in motion across the formation. Give is to Secret. Secret with a hole. Gets a block from Hockman. Cuts back to the middle of the field. To the 40. To the 36 yard line. Manny Secret just knifing through following Hockman's block. And Case is deep in Carnegie Mellon territory. That's the longest run of the day for Manny Secret. All the way down to the Case 36 yard line. Up to that point, 24 carries for 76 yards. That carry probably crosses the century mark, right? Yep, 25 carries for 105 yards. That one, a 29-yard burst. Case back to the I formation. Now Durini is on the right side. Case has three linemen to the left. This is Ricky Hanslick. Hanslick to the right side. Two flags come flying in. And Hanslick's long run of 15 yards is going to come back as Case gets called for a holding at the 37-yard line. So it'll back him up 10 from the line of scrimmage. You know, those are the kind of penalties that will drive a coach crazy. You know, just a simple zone blocking scheme, run the ball power right off the right tackle. And no reason to get up underneath and outside. And that's all that happens in those plays is the linemen and the receivers need to keep their hands inside the shoulder pads when they get outside. It's quite obvious where the penalty comes from at that point, and considering that two flags came flying in, it was blatant. Case will get called for the hold. It'll move it back to the 46-yard line. Case has first and 20 with 4.19 to play in the ballgame.
You know, Secret definitely has been a bit of a workhorse today with those 25 carries. That's a season high for him. Nickel package, no deep safety for Carnegie Mellon. Case with five wide receivers. And now they're going to flip-flop, and they will put a safety back there. But they go to one linebacker. Eric Olsen will then take the snap, go straight ahead. Olsen will pick up a couple, is turned over and twisted on the helmet, and Greg Deblack is going crazy. Here comes a flag late, and they're going to get Case for a personal foul after Eric Olsen about had his neck twisted off. Now they're going to call the horse collar after Greg Debelak threw his hat and his... Well, in the end, it's a right cut. Well, okay, and so then they're they'll call the, the horse defense. collar and then they'll call the sideline interference. They're going to get Debs for unsportsmanlike conduct. It'll be an offsetting penalty, but the flag never came out for the horse collar until Debs vehemently complained through his hat, through his headset. I sort of had the feeling, Ed, like they were throwing the flag on uh, Coach Debelak, which is why we're sitting here scratching our heads saying it was clearly a horse collar tackle. Right. But there, there was no, you know, no sign on the field that they were going to call that. But if it's a a 15-yard live ball penalty should move the ball ahead 15 for a first down, and then a personal foul backs it up 15. And that's the correct call. 15-yard penalty on the horse collar makes it an automatic first down. Then the penalty is a dead ball foul on the bench. They back it up 15, but it still remains first down. So it should be first and 10 for Case Western at the 43-yard line. Because the horse collar on Sportsmanlike is an automatic first down. So even if they move it from the spot of the foul, which is the 42 to the 27, would be a first down because of the penalty. Then the bench gets the personal foul for unsportsmanlike conduct. That backs it up 15, but it's a dead ball foul, so it doesn't affect the first or second down situation. So with 3.50 to play in the ball game, the referees are still sorting the mess out. And Greg Deblack was hot after Eric Olson was twisted around over the pile Eric Rolfus, a little too physical on the play. 3.50 and counting in the game. They start the clock. Case has a new set of downs. Carnegie Mellon has two timeouts. Spartans are nursing a six-point lead. Case gets the sign from the sideline. Beecher now in at quarterback. Beecher will take it straight ahead. Now he cuts to the outside of the 40, picks his way ahead near the 35-yard line. You had to think he was probably shifting his running back in the backfield there to be on the strong side of the formation as Hawkman was just going to be used as a lead blocker the whole way. Hawkman been that lead hammer all season long for Case Western. Three minutes to go in the game and Case back to the I formation. Hawkman at fullback, Secre is back to the tailback. And now Beecher goes under center. Beecher stumbles coming out, but it still gets the handoff to Secre. Secre stays in bounds. He almost fell out of bounds. That's the number one thing you got to do right now. <laughs> Stay in bounds. Case, Run the clock out. Case running to the short side of the field, but Case has a player down. Case has an injured player at the 35-yard line with 237 to play in the ball game. Case will finish the season today. We'll look ahead to next year, 2013. As you mentioned, Brendan, they'll open the season against Marietta here at Case Field. You know, the Pioneers going winless this season. Their program's kind of in a downward spiral. 
But as you mentioned, <laughs> when they're, you know, now Case leaving the UAA and joining the pack, th they'll play anybody next year just to put the full schedule That's together. Right. The agreement with the NCAC has officially ended this season where the four teams in the UAA had an agreement to play five additional games against UA or against NCAC teams, which allowed for easier scheduling in that case, would get eight games that way, and then only have to look for two non-conference per se games. Next year, it's a truly independent schedule for Case Western. And then in 2014, they will join the pack. Hockman is the injured Case player. Hockman will be helped to the sideline by a couple of his fellow teammates. Looks to be a right leg injury of some sort. Can't put any pressure on that right leg, right lower leg. Third down and short for the Spartans from the 34 yard line, 237 to play in the ball game. Next official broadcast on the Case Broadcasting Network will be in January as we start basketball season. Home UAA conference games set to be broadcast on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Ron Yance will have the play-by-play. -play. I'll be in the analyst chair for those once again. Our eighth season of bringing Case basketball to the fans. Beecher, the quarterback, in the shotgun formation on third down. Follows a lead block, has a hold to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Case Western. 2-11 to play in the ball game. How about that on third and one? And Billy Beecher straight up the gut for a touchdown. And they have all but put Carnegie Mellon on ice. 36-24. That's, that's an exclamation point, Ed, on a game that for a while... Case felt like, even though they were making all the plays, they were playing from behind. This is going to be a very hard-fought team win and a well-deserved win for the Spartans program. Spartans lead by 12 with 2.11 to play in the football game. Beecher will get credit with his second rushing touchdown of the game. This one from 32 yards out as he goes straight up the gut. Kick out blocked by George Duraney. And the Spartans have turned that into a 12-point lead. At one point, it looked dire for Case Western. They were down 21 to 10 as Carnegie Mellon had scored three unanswered touchdowns in the second quarter. Case would pull within five. It was an eight-point deficit at halftime as Carnegie Mellon would get a field goal as time expired. But in the second half, it's been all Case Western. They've put up three touchdowns since the break and have held Carnegie Mellon off the scoreboard, including getting a blocked field goal earlier here in the fourth quarter. 2-11 to play. The partially blocked punt, the two block kicks, I mean, those make all the difference. And the Spartans going for two once again. Eric Olson under center. Olson play fake to... Beecher in the backfield, wide open in the end zone is Volbers and a overshoot Drew Volbers incomplete. And with 2.11 to play in the ball game, 36-24, Case Western on top. And it looks as if the Spartans will win their sixth straight over Carnegie Mellon, maintain the academic ball trophy, and finish over 500 again. This team was three and seven in 2005. They were five and five in 2006. That's Dan Whalen's freshman year. And they ripped off three consecutive perfect seasons. Since then they've gone nine and one, eight and two, nine and one, and now six and four. You know, here's the other thing you got to keep in mind, too, Ed. When you go into the offseason on a win, especially one like this, it makes all the offseason workouts that much easier to go through. You get to hoist the trophy to close out the year. 
Herrera with the return to the 26 yard line and that's where Carnegie Mellon will start first and 10. Case Western on the afternoon nearly 500 yards in total offense. Vinnie Bell seven catches for 180 yards. And time of possession, the Spartans are gonna have 36 minutes of time of possession. Carnegie Mellon first and 10 from their own 26, 2.03 to play in the ball game. And now Carnegie Mellon has to call a timeout. So the Spartans will call time with 2.03 to play in the ball game. Cleveland Marriott downtown at Key Center offers the versatility and reliability to meet your unique travel and meeting needs. From smart spaces to practical amenities to world-class service, our flagship hotel will deliver the quality experience you expect, backed by the Marriott name you trust. At Cleveland Marriott, we have one goal, to serve you better. Book your special Case Western Reserve rate by visiting us at clevelandmarriottdowntown.com and entering promotional code C0N. Back here for the final two minutes and three seconds of the 2012 season. Case Western leading Carnegie Mellon 36-24. 2.03 to play in the football game. Case putting it away just moments ago. Billy Beecher had a 34-yard touchdown run. And the Spartans are going to go to the offseason with a 6-4 record, and they'll get the host or hoist the trophy. Kalkstein looking deep down the field. And there is contact and interference is going to be called against Case Western. Still only a 15-yard penalty for the Spartans. So from the line of scrimmage at the 27, it'll move it to the 42. Play took six seconds off the clock, 158 to play. Well, when you got a two-touchdown lead, there's no reason for that. You know, all you want to do is run the clock out. And again, provided that the, the only way Carnegie Mellon is going to be able to come back and beat you is if they score and get the ball back on an onside kick or, or you turn it over when you're trying to run out the clock. So just a, a mental lapse there that Case really didn't need at this point. Mellon has two time or one time out remaining. They had to burn one before they could get their offense set on this drive. Kalkstein in the pocket, looking under pressure, rolling to his right. Watson chasing, thrown back across the middle of the field, complete to Swanson, and Swanson gets out of bounds at the Case Western 43-yard line. First down for Carnegie Mellon in Case territory. Case content to let Mellon go up and down the field here, burning up time. Three wide receivers in the set, including the wing. It's Patrick Blanks in the pocket as Kalkstein, it collapses. He throws it to the sideline and incomplete. Kalkstein just getting rid of the football. Second and 10 for Carnegie Mellon. Case defense standing around, just mulling the situation. Carnegie Mellon late in the huddle, down to six on the play clock. Kalkstein calls for the ball. In the pocket, far side, incomplete. Intended for Swanson. Third and 10 for Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and it kind of goes without saying, but definitely four down territory <laughs> here with, with Carnegie Mellon. And 
again, you, you think about where this team used to be and where they are now, it's a good thing that they can kind of lean on a pass because there's no reason that they could run the football here, at least not as a design play. Case brings four. Kalkstein looking, nothing to throw to. Over the middle, finds a receiver. It's complete, but it's inbounds. Well, that's going to burn the final timeout for Carnegie Mellon and at least give them something manageable. It'll be fourth down and five. Completed to the tight end, the reserve tight end, Alex Lum. And so Carnegie Mellon's season comes down to this, fourth and five from the 38-yard line, 128 to play in the ball game. If they have any chance, they're going to need to convert here. Case has been bringing four and the linebacker has been showing blitz. So Marcus McCullough not letting up on the defensive side. And Carnegie Mellons, there you get a look at the case defense. Marcus McCullough kind of spying on the Carnegie Mellon offense. Has some final thoughts for his team. Some seniors on the defensive side, Wade Self and Kevin Nossum, Adam Watson. Michael Harris playing their final 90 seconds in a Case Western uniform. Fourth and five for Carnegie Mellon from the Case 38. Kalkstein in the pocket, looking, fires over the middle, incomplete. And the Spartans are going to hold on and win this one. 123 to play in the game. Carnegie Mellon out of timeouts. Case will have to snap the ball three times in victory formation. And they will get to keep the Academic Bowl trophy. This is a pretty good football game, Ed. You know, it looked like early on maybe it was starting to get out of hand when it was 21 to 10, but give Case a lot of credit. They, uh, they, they really had to fight hard to win this game. Uh, and, this and I think, uh, again, when you go into the offseason, you beat your rival, you win uh, for the sixth straight time, the Academic Bowl makes all the off-season workouts that much easier to go through. Olsen will take the snap and kneel down with 1.20 to go, and maybe more importantly, Case wins in a day to honor Bill Deitman as the proceeds from today's game will go to the Bill Deitman Endowment Fund here at Case Western. Deitman graduated in 2011, played his final game two seasons ago in 2010, tragically passed away last month. And the Case Spartans in the pregame today had former teammates both from the high school and college level here. Deitman's parents were on site, presented with a framed jersey of Bill Deitman. Had his number painted near the 35-yard line on both sides of the field. Olsen takes the next snap, kneels down. And, and we'll have to do it again. And that will do it as the Spartans will win 36-24 this afternoon over longtime rival Carnegie Mellon. Case has now won six in a row in the series, maybe more importantly, our two and one in conference play and pending the outcome in Chicago are in line for another UAA championship.